Big thank you to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. More about that later on. Eating mozzarella does not make you clever. And eating chocolate isn't good for you. And to find out why, we need to consider correlation and causation. And the now fairly famous saying, at least among statisticians, that correlation does not imply causation. This is something that anybody working with data has to understand. But even if you do understand it, it's still really easy to be seduced into seeing causation when it's not really there. It's just something that humans tend to do. So what is causation? Well, it's when one thing leads to another. I throw a brick at a window and the window breaks. Did the brick cause the window to break or would it have broken anyway? Now we can't always easily know that. I mean, in this case, it's likely that the window would have broken because of the brick, but there are scenarios where it's just not that simple. So when you read like here that a high fat diet is linked to breast cancer, the implication there is that a high fat diet causes breast cancer. You need to be really skeptical. Why? Well, to start with, it depends on how the data was collected. Let's take the high fat diet and breast cancer example. Did the study take two randomly selected groups of women and then over the course of decades feed one group a low fat diet and the other group a high fat diet and then analyze the results? No, of course they didn't. And that would be highly unethical. Instead, this was an observational study where past behavior of groups of women were observed and analyzed. Now, the problem with this is that there could be other factors at play that you don't have any control over. Poorer women might have higher fat diets and they might be more likely to smoke and less able to take care of themselves due to a lack of resources. Their lifestyles might just be more unhealthy. And this would be a type of selection bias. Or perhaps if you're going to develop breast cancer, you're more likely to want to eat fatty food. With observational studies, it's difficult, really impossible, to prove cause and effect. This can also be used when someone wants to try to convince you that something isn't true. It took a long time for the medical community to agree that smoking causes lung cancer, due in part to the fact that many people who smoke don't go on to develop lung cancer, and some people that don't smoke do develop lung cancer. Then, of course, there were the vested interests that didn't want the link to be made, and they confused the picture even more. Medics can now say that smoking causes lung cancer, but it took a long time to get there. Medical trials give some really good insight into just how difficult it is to prove cause and effect. Medical companies have to show that their treatments have an effect on the progress or outcome of a disease. And to do that, they have to go to really great lengths. The trials are randomized and they're double blind, which means that neither the doctors treating the patients nor the patients themselves know who's getting the actual treatment and who's getting the placebo. It's expensive and it's time consuming. And if there were an easier way of doing it, the drug companies would choose that easier way in order to save time and money. But there isn't because it's such a difficult thing to prove. So the next time you're looking at data and you see correlation between two variables, be very careful not to assume that it's a change in one variable that's causing a change in another variable. And even more importantly, when you read research or articles that claim that there's some kind of causal link between two variables. Be incredibly skeptical about that. Look into who published the research and whether it's actually in their interest for that link to exist. I just want to tell you about today's sponsor, Brilliant. If you want to learn the sort of math that you need for data science, probability and statistics, linear algebra, or you want to learn to think more mathematically, or to improve your problem solving abilities, or to learn to program or computer science, or to learn physics, then definitely take a look at Brilliant. I'm a physicist, I have a physics degree, and I still learn physics from Brilliant. I've been a paid up user of Brilliant for over a year, and I think it's an excellent platform. It consists of short bite-sized content that's extremely well explained, 
There are quizzes to help you understand the concepts, and using it feels more like you're playing a game than doing a course. It's fun, but the objective is learning, and you do learn. There's a web platform and an app. And the first 200 people to sign up using the link in the description will get 20% off an annual subscription. So go and take a look.